Hello folks and uh, welcome to the next installment on the Tesla project. So what we have planned for today is to get a good look into the front drive unit. Now as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, unlike the large rear drive unit where there's plenty of information online about how to take the thing apart, I haven't been able to see much of anything uh, about the front unit. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get into this now and basically have a look at the uh, construction and then we're going to see about getting the inverter section removed uh, so that we can get at the logic board and commence the reverse engineering procedures. Stay with us. Alrighty, so front drive unit. Um, I will do a side by side comparison with the large drive unit uh, as soon as I have that uh, back together, which will be fairly soon. Now, so a couple of things I immediately notice about the front drive unit um, is that there appears to be two coolant loops. Uh, there's a coolant loop here on the motor. We've got two black, I'd say 16 millimeter uh, holes tails. And there's what looks like a heat exchanger here as well. So that's probably for cooling oil uh, with water. So that may mean that the motor is in fact oil cooled in this particular model, I'm not sure. So this end here is where we're going to be concentrating. This is the inverter end. And we see there it's just a grounding strap, but we see here there's another... Uh, two coolant pipes here for cooling the inverter. Uh, there's a mounting bracket here which we're going to remove to give us better access. And like a lot of front wheel drive systems, <coughs> there's a little stub shaft here coming out of this uh, side of the differential with a carrier bearing. Uh, but it's an extremely tidy unit. Um, is considerably smaller than the rear drive unit. Uh, so right, what we're going to do then is, a quick look here, there's a 20 pin uh, connector here uh, for uh, signals. It's not amp seal, so that's the first thing I've, no I've noticed. Uh, there's a connector for the high voltage here, some kind of specialist type of connector. Uh, the good news there is that we did get the kind of matching uh, plugs to go into that and a bit of wire. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start in on this. going to get that bracket off there. going to get the grounding strap off. And then we will see about removing the inverter. Now it looks like... There's some 10 millimeter bolts here just going around the periphery. And taking a guess, the fact that there's cooling here, the fact that there's high voltage here, and the signals are sank back here, I'm going to take a guess that the power electronics are in this front part of the case, and the logic is up here. So we'll see if I'm in any way right about that. So I'm going to go ahead and take these bits off very quickly off camera and then we'll get started on the actual uh, dissection. Alrighty, so remove the mounting bracket which, which took yeah, a fair bit of force because basically the mounting bracket bolts and this earth strap were put in with serious red Loctite. So pro tip, courtesy of Mighty Car Mods, when you're taking something apart, get yourself some of these resealable freezer bags and a sharpie and write on them uh, what's coming from where, because if you're like me, you're just going to forget and then, you know, there's always a few spares, isn't there? So, alright. Basically, we've got a series of 8mm studs. Uh, going around the outside of the casing here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the bottom, 
uh, and take them out in a row and then we'll start to loosen this guy up and see you know just see what's good as they say now there's a cover on something here I'm not sure what this is I might get that off and just see and of course that's naturally a 10 millimeter that's for that Elon so let's get that guy off and just see what's under there Just in case this is something that needs to be disconnected or whatever, we get a rough idea of what this is anyway. Okay. Okay, so there's some kind of a stopper in there. I'm not sure what that is. Now, one thing I should note as well that I'm probably going to have to do uh, even before I take this off is there is a orange plate down here you can't really see it but it's similar to um the setup on the large drive unit that is basically um is basically where the three phase connections connect from the inverter power electronics to the motor so i'm probably going to have to lift this up and get in i forgot to do that so all right let me just pop this plate back on here and then we'll go ahead uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get that plate removed and we'll take the bolts out from there because uh, then theoretically when we take these 8mm studs out we should be able to just lift this whole affair back off here. Alrighty so just to make life easier uh, I took a quick uh, plan B and took the large mounting bracket there off the back of the motor. That lets me tilt the motor up here at this kind of an angle on the dolly, give me better access to this cover plate. So, the cover plate has a sticker on here warning me of all kinds of death and consequences like that. So we're going to be uh, making holes in it here to expose the fasteners that hold this plate on. So. Let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can get in here and make that happen. Right, I'm not sure what these fasteners are, but if I remember this from the large drive unit. Uh, let's see here. These gloves don't really help. Where are my delicate hands? Oh no, the warranty. Oh no, the warranty's void. Oh crap. Yeah, the warranty's void. Oh no. Oh well. There goes my plans for claiming this was all accident damage when it blows up. There we go. Void. Void. Okay, so we got two. Um, looks like we got two. Look okay, at eight millimeter fasteners here and there's two kind of mounting pins here as well. So all right, let's get the socket arm on that in a second. Okay, we got two studs out of there. We get a pry bar. We should be able to now just so be on O ring seals in here, so we should be able to just pop those O rings. Right, nicely. There we go. Looking good. Here it comes. And we're out. Okay, ceiling plate is out. We got three 10 millimeter bolts holding the phase terminals. Good news is they're not murdered. And there's one out. And there's three out. Woohoo! All right. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the original plan and go around the casing here and take out these eight millimeter bolts. 
So, uh, yeah, I just good job. I remembered that to take all this stuff out um, before you start in on the before you start in on the casing, really. So, let me start it here down the bottom. This one down here. Okay. This is a hollow aluminium casing, so I gotta be particularly gentle with it. Alright, no metal objects. Oh, okay. Alright, so we've now broken this guy loose. It's sitting on my little block of wood here. So I'm going to just keep my hand on this and stand up, or kneel up, I should say. Okay, I can see in. Uh, looks like the supposition was correct. Um, and I can see the encoder connector here. So you guys just bear with me here now for a minute. We've also got temperature sensors. But unlike so many of these automotive uh, systems Tesla have actually left some uh, little bit of slack on these so you can just disconnect it looks like they've used their favorite JST oh this is a different type of JST here it comes guys inverters off and very very straightforward um, Okay, so let me get rid of that block of wood. It's no longer needed. I'll bring you guys in for the close-up. Alright. Okay, so. Uh, looks like very, um, very nicely done, obviously. But, so just looking here. Uh... Casing has a little bit of sealer or some kind of paste on it. Um, we've got our three phase terminals here. Got our encoder and I believe a looks like a motor temperature sensor. It looks like a single motor temperature sensor in this case uh, going on to this guy. We've used a slightly different type of a JST plug by the appearance of that. But this is the motor side. Um, so that's really, we won't be doing anything with this. This is uh, going to remain as is. Uh, these are again three phase terminals, connector for the encoder and one temperature sensor by the appearance of it and we'll be verifying that later. Now for the bit that you really want to see is the inverter. And this is one insanely nice this is one insanely nice um, piece of kit here, very compact uh, and we will be doing much more detail on this now once we get it uh, on the bench and start figuring uh, stuff out. But just on a very first glance, they have been very kind to me. So for example, there's some writing here on this connector which mates to this guy. It says encoder and stator thermistor. So we know what that guy is, which is brilliant. Um, this says off board high voltage interlock. So don't really need to worry about that. This one here says fluid thermistor. Fantastic. So really good. Uh, looks like the driver boards are down here underneath it. Looks like this is the logic board. This is B, where we're doing our um, work. And it looks like that rather than having cables connecting stuff, there's a multi-pin connector here. So, that's it guys. The inverter is off. Um, not a big job at all. Arguably easier than large drive unit. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, tidied up here. And then we will be going, uh, we we'll take the inverter inside get it on the bench and we'll start having uh, a serious look at it. So of course as soon as I uh, started filming this the neighbor's house alarm kicked off again so 
that seems to be uh, <laughs> that, seems, that seems to be part of the schedule here. Anyway, uh, we have the inverter here on the bench, and before I do anything else, uh, I've made a few observations here. I just want to talk you guys through. So what you're seeing here on the top is basically the logic board. So this is what we're going to be you know, reverse engineering and redesigning is this PCB here on the top. Now, a couple of things to note straight away. Number one is the board is definitely larger than the uh, existing. Uh, like here, for example, is one of the bare boards that I made for the large drive unit. And as you can see, you know, there's, you could probably get nearly two of them in there there's uh there's quite a bit of extra size now <clears throat> first thing to jump out is these connectors here they are jst uh, but they are a different type of jst so we're gonna have to find out what they are um there are also true hole pins uh, rather than the surface mount type uh, that were used on the large drive unit there's a connector here, so where you see this blue plastic, there's a 20 pin connector to the outside world uh, where signals and so on, power signals, all that kind of thing come in. So I'm, I'm gonna get a pin out of that from my service manual and we'll start to power this thing up. But it doesn't look like an amp seal and it's got 20 pins, which is a non-standard uh, connector for the amp seal range uh, so we need to find out what that guy is next thing that jumped out at me was that we're using what looked like hall effect uh, current sensors here and the connections are for these current sensors are directly soldered to the PCB there's four here and four here so that is going to present an interesting little challenge for us um, in so far as that um, when we come to replacing this card we're going to have to desolder these current sensors so there looks to be a kind of a multi-way connector uh, 24 pins that connects the logic board here uh, to the drivers and so on that go on underneath the um, the the logic board now 24 pins is kind of interesting because on the um, on the large drive unit uh, they happen to use a 24 pin um, JST connector uh, for connecting to the IGBT drivers so could be similarities uh, from a kind of a you know overview of the PCB there's three large uh, QFP packages. I haven't um, looked at what they are yet, but I'm gonna take a guess. It's the kind of typical uh, two TI uh, microprocessors and a, um, a, you know, some kind of a PLD of some sort, but it may not be, but I'll have a look at them later on and identify them for you guys. Looks like two uh, JTAG connectors. These are the kind of, um, oh, they're a two millimeter pitch uh, JTAG connector, so eight way, one here and one here, which would lead credence to, actually there's another one here that I hadn't noticed. So there's three um, eight way, uh, or sorry, 10 way JTAGs, sorry, 10 way JTAGs. Uh, so that is a brief overview of our um, inverter. It's extremely light. Uh, I would say, holding this here, there's probably about maybe seven to eight kilograms in it, if that, uh, including the casing. So, what we are going to do next is, we're gonna get some power connected here. Because what I wanna start doing is, I wanna start mapping out what some of these pins do uh, before we start removing any of the components. And the best way to do that is if we apply 12 volt power to the inverter here, everything just kind of wakes up. So, you know, for example, here 
on this connector for the encoder uh, you know we're going to find where the 5 volt is the ground is we can find grounds pretty much straight away just using um, just using a circuit a circuit tester uh, power will be a little bit more tricky so once the unit's powered up <coughs> excuse me uh, we'll be able to you know find where the 5 volts are find where various various other signals are um, and then we will kind of remove this metal cover here and remove the logic board uh, complete with the current sensors that's obviously what they've done here is the current sensors look like, like, look like they snap into this mounting uh, these two cables pass through them these are just normal uh, flexible cable it looks like about 50 square um, and they're crimped very well, very well crimped. Oh, there goes the alarm again, brilliant. Um, and yeah, they're very well crimped on here and they're just held in place by this little plastic uh, guy here. And I'm seeing something else there. What am I seeing in there? There's, a, there's another little connector in here doing something. I'm not sure what that is. We're not gonna worry about it too much now. But, so what, what it kind of looks like is we have our 20 way um input we have a 24 way connector to the um to the igbt drivers we have our current sensors here uh fluid thermistor high voltage interlock we're not we're not going to worry about that um and that's about it so all right let's get at some basic uh reverse engineering here and see what we can find out Alrighty, so 40 bucks to a dodgy Russian website later and uh, trawling through some more modern uh, service manuals and wiring diagrams, we have got the thing powered up. So these two LEDs here beside these processors do pretty much the same as they do on the large uh, drive unit board. They just seem to have various diagnostic functions. So, just been probing around a little bit here. Our current sensors uh, are indeed analog this time. Just checked with the oscilloscope. They put out a nice 2.5 volt DC level here um, at idle current. Uh, so just probing around some more, just looking at this connector here in particular is the most interesting to me. Uh, because this is the interface between the logic board and the IGBT drivers. So we're going to be working around here. There's a bunch of test points here that seem to relate to these pins. So we're going to be looking at that in more detail. Also this device U U2 here may have some correlation with what's going on. So that's about where I'm going to leave you guys uh, for the minute here. We're now basically starting the reverse engineering procedures and uh, we will see you in the next video when we'll be doing more of a detailed teardown here. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Um, if you want to support uh, this and, and other open source uh, projects that I'm working on, uh, please visit the Patreon link in the description also. Alright guys, um, so we will see you next time and happy circuit probing.